Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar on recommissioning your Trollson equipment. I'm Matt Gentile with the marketing team at Partstown, and I'm joined by our presenter, Andre Bobbitt, an experienced service supervisor from our partners at Trollson. At Partstown, safety is our number one core value. So before we get started, we want to remind everyone on the line that if you have issues with your equipment performance, or questions about any of the procedures discussed in this presentation, we strongly recommend that customers contact a factory authorized service agent who can help with your specific unit and all your commercial kitchen equipment needs. And now let's turn it over to Andre. Andre, take it away. Thank you, Matt. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Andre Bobbitt. Uh, I'm a service supervisor here at Charleston Refrigeration. Um, just give you a quick overview of what we will discuss today in this uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to go over a recommissioning guide, uh, basically uh, give you guys some quick steps and, and tips uh, for recommissioning equipment. Uh, we'll move on to preventative maintenance tips. Uh, we'll go over some troubleshooting, frequently asked questions, and to go through some sanitary solutions. Uh, there will be a time at the end of the presentation for q and I encourage you to ask any questions that you feel the need to. Uh, we're open to answer anything. Recommissioning. Um, this is a very important step. As we all know, uh, uh, going through the pandemic, uh, there's a lot of equipment that hasn't been used uh, for several months or even a year or more. Um, just giving you a, a couple of quick steps on how to recommission your equipment so that you can have optimal performance uh, from, from your equipment and kitchen needs. Step number one, um, check your condenser coil. Uh, you'll, you'll hear me be pretty repetitive about this step throughout the entire presentation. I can't stress how important it is to make sure that you have a clean condenser coil. Um, if your coil needs cleaning, uh, you can simply just lift the louver assembly and clean the condenser coil to remove any accumulated debris on your refrigerator or your freezer. This is a critical step that's often overlooked. Uh, it's a part of preventative maintenance that I, I, I want to stress uh, can be done uh, enough. There's, there's uh, very good benefits when it comes to cleaning your condenser coil. If you want to make sure that you're maintaining proper temp and keeping your food at a safe temperature uh, for your customers. Uh, number two, um, clean your exterior and interior surfaces. Um, thoroughly clean all exterior and interior surfaces, including the shelving and tray slides. Uh, this is very important. You want to make sure that you keep a clean atmosphere for the inside of your cabinet, that, that way that you're prolonging the lifetime of the cabinet, as well as uh, keeping a, a, a safe environment for the food that you'll be serving. Um, do not use any chlorine-based cleaners on the unit outside of the easy clean gaskets. You don't want any chlorine-based cleaners uh, to cause any discoloration or eat away at the cabinet at any time. Step number three, check your gaskets. Um, this is a very, very important step. Uh, the gasket, as we all know, is a very vital uh, piece of the equipment. Uh, the gasket is what's going to create your seal around the door. Uh, which is very important to make sure that you're maintaining the proper temperature inside of the unit and that you're not leaking out any 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 uh, cool air, um, as well as letting any warm air inside of the cabinet. Uh, to check your gasket, simply just open the door and inspect the gasket for proper condition and fit, making sure that you don't see any rips, tears, uh, gaps, or anything of that nature in the gasket so it's creating a full seal. Look for gaps in normal wear or tear clean and or replace as necessary. Uh, gaskets are a wear and tear item. Uh, depending on usage and cleanliness is going to determine uh, the lifetime of that gasket. And as I said before, this is very important to make sure that you're keeping a good seal across that cabinet so that we're not letting any cool air out. Step number four, inspect your doors. Uh, this is a, a something that can be done uh, daily, multiple times a day. Uh, if the unit's doors do not close or seal properly, you can simply adjust the hinge or level the cabinet. As we all know, going into a uh, commercial kitchen, uh, normally the floors are, are pitched. Whether they're pitched forward or pitched backward, um, it's normally a pitch in the kitchen. Uh, what you would be, what would be to your advantage to do if you're having issues with the door sealing would be to uh, have the unit pitched uh, backward. That way we're letting gravity help assist us with closing those doors. 
uh, in a busy kitchen environment. We all know, especially during the lunch rush, uh, things can get busy with us going in and out of the, the cabinet. Uh, you want to make sure that you have uh, good door adjustments so that that cabinet is self-assisting when it comes to closing that door. Step number five, uh, as Matt mentioned earlier, safety first. Make sure you're being careful whenever you're trying to restore your power. Uh, you can easily check the condition of the plugs, cords, and outlets to ensure safety before turning the unit on. Just giving it a quick look over, making sure you don't see any frays or any, any type of damage to the, to the cord. Uh, once the power has been restored, check that the exterior temperature display is working. You want to make sure that you're getting the correct temperature uh, on your display. A uh, simple tip to, the, to make sure that you're getting the correct temperature, stick your thermometer inside of that, that cabinet and make sure that uh, the uh, thermometer is matching up with the temperature display. This is something that's going to be very vital, that way that we know that we're holding the, create, uh, the correct tip uh, for our product. Um, review any alarm codes if alerted by display. Um, once you unplug a unit and plug it back up, there's going to be a default uh, power failure alarm just letting you know that the cycle is going to be uh, that the cycle has been reset. Um, what you can do is go through our controller and make sure that you have no other active alarms uh, letting you know that the unit is ready and uh, to run under normal operations. Number six, ensure proper operating temperature. Allow the cabinet to reach proper temperature before placing products inside. Refrigerators uh, normally vary from about 32 to 40 degrees. Uh, freezers normally are about at zero or a little bit lower. And obviously a heated cabinet would be about 140 to 180. Uh, you wanna make sure that you allow, uh, if it's, a, if it's a, a medium or low temp uh, model, allow that unit to cool all the way down before placing product inside. As well as if you're using a heated cabinet, give the cabinet enough time to warm up to the correct temperature before putting product into store. Preventative maintenance tips. Clean the condenser coil. Why should you clean the condenser coil? You want to clean that condenser coil to make sure that you're getting optimal performance and given a long compressor life. Uh, the frequency is normally about every three months. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is something that you can't do enough. You want to make sure that the uh, condenser coil is clean and not clogged so it's able to breathe. Um, we recommend about every three months. Um, if you're feeling overzealous, you can do it about once a month just to ensure that you're getting uh, optimal performance outside of that unit. Uh, the prep for it is simple. For upright units, remove the two bottom screws securing the louver panel. Then pivot this upwards, allowing full access to the front facing condenser, as you see in the picture to the left. Uh, cleaning, uh, the cleaning process, you're just going to vacuum or brush any dirt or debris from the thin condenser coil around the compressor and other cooling system parts. If significant dirt is clogging the condenser fans, use compressed air to blow this clear. When finished, reverse the louver uh, uh, removal process as instructed above. This is a quick process that only takes about 15 minutes out of your day that can add a lot of lifetime to your unit. If the condenser co coil is clogged up, you won't be able to reach temp. You'll be running your, your compressor a lot longer uh, to cause it more damage to the lifetime of the cabinet. Step number seven, I'm going to pass it off to James Polero, uh, one of our marketing geniuses here at Charleston for a quick video. Did you know that the single most important routine maintenance task for any piece of refrigeration equipment, be it a prep table, a blast chiller, a reach-in, or even a griddle stand, is keeping the condenser coil clean and free of obstruction. The condenser coils where heat from the refrigerant is released out into the atmosphere. The quicker and easier it can accomplish this, the better performing, more reliable, and energy efficient the equipment will operate. A dirty, clogged condenser coil will negatively affect overall performance, resulting in slower temperature recovery, significantly greater energy usage, and even makes the compressor more likely to fail prematurely, all of which can potentially affect your bottom line. Thank you, James. Uh, you also want to inspect and clean the unit. Why do you want to do this? For food safety, sanitation, and prolonged cabinet life. 
This is something that can be done daily. Just give it a quick look over of the unit. As we all know, uh, commercial equipment is ran 24 seven. Uh, the prep for this is just baking soda and water. Normally you're gonna use a mix of about a tablespoon of baking soda to a, a pint of water. That's a, that's a pretty good ratio. Make sure that you have a soft cloth when you're going to clean your unit. Apply the cleaning solution to the cloth and wipe in the direction of the metal grain. Do not apply the cleaning solution directly on the cabinet. You wanna make sure that you put it on the cloth. The inspection is just visual. Inspect the unit for any signs of wear that may require repair. If you see anything that looks odd or out of place, uh, please call service. This is something that can only take about 15 minutes, so we'll also prolong the cabin life. Don't use cleaning solutions containing the following. Chlorine, such as bleach, lye, sodium or calcium hydroxide, or ammonia, unless other specified. You don't want to use any cleaner that's containing any type of chlorine, lye, or ammonia because those types of products can eat away at the cat. Inspect your gasket. Why do you need to inspect your gasket? For sanitation and to, uh, for air distribution protection. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't have any dirt, debris, or grime built up on that gasket so no, none of that material will be getting to the food, as well as making sure that you got a good seal to make sure that the air being distributed is going to stay inside of the box. This is very vital. A gasket is a wear and tear product uh, depending on the usage of the cabinet, so we want to make sure that we have a good gasket to create a good seal. Uh, the frequency on this is recommended to about every three months. Um, for an inspection, all you have to do is open the doors and inspect the gaskets visually. Pull the gasket with your hand and visually inspect for tears, dirt, mold, and worn areas. Replace as needed. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is probably one of the most vital components because you don't want to let any cold air out, as well as let any warm air, ambient air, from the kitchen inside. This is something quick that might take about 10 minutes of your time to prolong your cabinet life and make sure that you're getting quality refrigeration from your product. I'll pass it back to James for another quick video. Did you know that dirty or damaged door gaskets on your refrigeration equipment can lead to health department citations for your establishment? It's not surprising. Although these gaskets are among the only wear items on a commercial refrigerator, freezer, or hot food holding cabinet, their proper care is often neglected by the operators. Please allow me to show you a few examples. Here's a typical refrigerator door gasket. Outwardly, it looks fine, doesn't it? But let's take a closer look. See what we found there inside the bellows? That's dirt and almost certainly bacteria, which could potentially contaminate the product stored within. This situation can be cited during a health inspection. Now, a damaged door gasket isn't only an issue for the health department. They can also result in uneven holding temperatures, increased energy usage, and in extreme cases, possibly even reduce shelf life or unsafe food. Thanks again, James. Maintenance disasters. Obviously, any type of failures that happen uh, with equipment aren't planned. Um, this can be pre uh, prevented by making sure that you uh, take proper care of the unit. I've ran into situations in the past uh, with service calls of people saying things like, hey, my unit's not cooling. I wonder why. Um, the condenser coil being clogged uh, with anything that's being uh, put in the atmosphere, such as flour or batter or anything of that nature, can collect over time. These are small particles that we can't see with the naked eye, but obviously our equipment does collect. Um, I ran into a situation with a customer uh, where they were complaining that the unit just wasn't cool. We sent service out and the service technician found a plastic sack clogged in on the uh, condenser coil. This was preventing the coil from being able to breathe. You wanna make sure that you're doing as much of an inspection as you can to try to make sure that you have nothing blocking the condenser coil or your compressor. Let these uh, components breathe freely so that they can give you optimal performance every time that you're trying to use the equipment. Troubleshooting frequently asked questions. My condensing unit fails to start. If you're having issues with your condensing unit starting, that means that you're not having any refrigeration. A quick step would be to check the cord and plug to make sure it hasn't been disconnected. 
Um, this is something that, that does happen more often than not. Uh, as, as we all know, every restaurant or commercial kitchen is going to have a cleaning process. When people clean behind the units, they do pull the equipment out, and sometimes a cord can be unplugged or be loosened a little bit. Uh, make sure before calling any service that you make sure that you have proper power to your cord and plug. Uh, also, check your control temperature settings. Uh, whatever your set point is, i.e. a refrigerator having be set at 32, make sure that the, con uh, the controller is actually set to that temperature. If, uh, if it's not calling for the compressor, it won't come on. So whatever set point that it, you have desired, make sure that the controller does have that program. Condensing unit operates for prolonged periods of time or continuously. Uh, this is an issue. Um, if you do run into a situation like this, make sure that the doors are closed and properly. If you don't have your doors closed, the unit's going to run a lot longer because it's going to be sucking in ambient temperature uh, from the kitchen into the box, making the compressor have to work harder in order to try to reach the desired set point. Once it does satisfy, it won't hold the temp long because the doors won't be closed, letting warm air in. So make sure that your doors are closing properly and that you have a good seal on your gasket. Uh, the dirty condenser or filter can be an issue as well, causing that compressor to work harder than what it should. Make sure that you clean these areas properly to ensure optimal performance. Uh, my evaporator coil is iced or needs to be defrosted. Um, if you have an iced up coil, you're basically blocking the cavity of the cabinet. So any cool air that's being created can't reach the interior. Um, one way to get rid of an ice coil is to go simply into our, our owner's manual and go to the setting for a manual defrost cycle. Manually defrosting will let that coil defrost and clear so that we can supply cold, cool air into the cap. My food compartment is too warm. Make sure you're checking your doors and your gaskets for proper seal. You want to make sure that you're not adding any warm air from the kitchen into the box, conflicting with the cool air that's being supplied. Uh, perhaps a large quantity of warm food has recently been added or the door was kept open for a long period of time. In both cases, allow adequate time for the cabinet to recover to its normal operating temperature. In a situation like this, you take uh, fresh hot food that's, you know, two, 300 degrees hot, and you put it inside of a box that's 32 degrees. Eventually, physics is gonna allow that to, uh, to equal out you'll see the temp of the box rise because it's trying to catch up with the warm food. Don't panic in a situation like this. Let the refrigerator do its job. Give it time to cool down that product. Uh, controller setting too high, just readjust <clears throat> per the instructions on the owner's manual. Uh, you can adjust the set point to whatever desired temp you need to and within our controller. And make sure that condenser coil is clean. I uh, can't stress enough, if that coil isn't clean, then we are not going to get the full performance out of our refrigeration system that we desire. Uh, my food compartment is too cold. Perhaps a large quantity of very cold or frozen food has recently been added. Allow adequate time for the cabinet to recover its normal operating temperature. Uh, and the example that I just gave with the food being too warm, it's pretty much the same with the food being too cold. If you have a refrigerator and you put a frozen chicken in there that's negative 20 degrees, obviously that cold is going to absorb inside the box, allowing it to equal out. Let, this, let the food, give the food time to catch up with the box so that the box is holding the proper temperature for your food. You can also adjust the controller to a warmer set, or <clears throat> excuse me, a warmer setting if desired. Condensation on the exterior surface. Um, check your door alignment and gaskets for a proper seal. If you are letting warm air leak into the box, you're going to end up with some condensation. Um, an example that I can give is, you know, if you take a, a ice cold Coca-Cola out of the refrigerator and set it on a, the kitchen counter, eventually you're going to see that can start to sweat because it's, you know, 75, 80 degrees out in our ambient temperature, but the product's a lot colder. Uh, in, in places where you have high humidity, condensation is going to exist. That's just the nature of physics. If condensation is on the exterior surface of the unit, perfectly normal during period times of high humidity, just make sure that you're wiping that condensation as you see it. If your compressor is humming but not starting, stop what you're doing and call service immediately. 
Um, if you hear any irregular noises from your compressor, my personal suggestion would be to, to uh, make, make sure that you unplug the unit so nobody else can use it and so it's not causing any more stress on the compressor or any of our other components in the refrigeration system. Please call service if you're hearing any odd noises coming from your compressor or your condenser unit. If you have no power to the unit at all, check and make sure that the cord hasn't been disconnected. Also, check your power supply breaker on site. That way you're eliminating any issues and just making sure that the issue is with the box. Uh, there is a toggle switch on our units. Uh, make sure that toggle switch is in the up position uh, before saying that you don't have power being supplied. If you, if you do all these steps and you're still having an issue, please call service immediately. When placing a service call here at Charleston, um, we, 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 we can be contacted uh, from 7.30 to 4.30 Central. Um, our phone number is 800-825-8220. We have 11 uh, service technicians on hand waiting to assist you in any needs that you have. Um, you can reach us 24-7 by email uh, at service at charleston.com, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Before placing a warranty service request, please check the following to ensure that it's truly a warranty issue. Is the electrical cord plugged in? Is the fuse okay or the circuit breaker on? Is the condenser coil clean? And is the power switch on? These are four important steps that you want to make sure that you do before placing a service call to ensure that this is truly a warranty issue. If after checking the above items and the unit is still not operating properly, please contact an authorized for all the service, re service representative and we'll have service dispatched to you as soon as possible. When making a service request, please make sure that you have the following information available. Uh, that way that we can uh, help you as, as quickly as possible. We're going to need the model number of your unit so that we uh, have knowledge of exactly what type of cabinet you have. And we're going to also need the serial number to make sure that the unit's under warranty and determine the age. This uh, information can be found on the serial tag. The serial tag is inside of the unit. If you open the door and look to the left, you will see a serial tag as so in this picture with that information. We're going to need an on-site contact name and number, uh, as well as the physical location of, of, of your restaurant, uh, that way that we can get service to you and get this information to the service company and, and they can set up an ETA. This has to be uh, my favorite slide of this entire presentation. Our Save Your Kitchen uh, giveaway is the largest giveaway of the year. Um, right now, if you haven't entered, I encourage you to scan the QR code now with your phone so that you can enter to win a, uh, to have a chance to win some free kitchen equipment. Uh, this is for Charleston and Hobart equipment. The prize choices from Charleston include a one-section reach-in refrigerator, a pass-through refrigerator, a one-section reach-in freezer, or an egg-plate milk cooler. All good products to have in addition to your kitchen. The Hobart food machine price choices are an automatic slicer as well as a QT mixer. Our Hobart wear wash price choice is a Hobart dish machine. These are excellent products that are open to K through 12 school nutrition professionals and maintenance technicians. It's easy to enter. Simply enter the online form at www.saveyourkitchen.com or scan the QR code right now to be directed to the link. Encouraging you to use this opportunity, increase your school's chances of winning by encouraging other team members to enter as well. Sanitary refrigeration solutions. As we all know, uh, since the pandemic has began, san uh, sanitation has became a, a very new animal. Uh, we want to make sure that we're uh, keeping all food uh, safe for the customers that we're serving, as well as providing a safe and sanitary workplace for our employees and end users using the, the equipment. Uh, one of uh, our good designs uh, to increase sanitary solutions is our easy open foot pedal. The ergonomically positioned easy open foot pedal enables operators to open the cabinet by simply pressing a lever with the ball of their foot, providing no touch, no touch door opening. This door opening method reduces the spread of germs through frequently touched surfaces and mitigates the risk of cross-contamination from accidental spills. 
I recommend this to anybody who's getting a cabinet who has a busy kitchen. I mean, in certain situations, we may be loading and need both of our hands, and we can just simply open the door with using our foot, as well as leaving uh, less air room for cross-contamination because we're not touching different products and touching these handles. Easy clean gaskets. Uh, this is something that we provide here at Trawson. These special gaskets are sanitizer friendly, unlike typical PVC, and its proprietary one-fold design makes it simple to see and eliminate dirt and mold. Lab testing shows easy clean gaskets last four times longer than traditional PVC gaskets. This is a very, very, very important item uh, that can prolong your, your cabinet life and as well as uh, leave you with uh, less components to replace. As I mentioned earlier, the gasket is a wear and tear issue. Commercial kitchens, the door is open and closing, open and closing constantly. So that gasket is getting used uh, uh, frequently. An easy clean gasket will last four, four times longer than a traditional PVC. Glass door models. Not only are these glass door models beautiful, but it does actually help uh, speed up the process in your kitchen. Easily view the contents through glass doors minimizing the need for excessive door openings and helping to decrease the spread of germs through frequent contact areas. Uh, this is uh, good for loading and unloading. That way you know how much space you have in the kitchen and what product you have in the kitchen. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, ambient temperature coming inside of that cabinet does make the temperature rise. So it, it decreases door openings if you're not opening the cabinet because you, you can actually visually see, hey, I don't need anything out of this unit. I suggest glass door models for anybody who has a busy kitchen. Purchase in general Trawson parts. Um, as you guys know, uh, Trawson does have a three-year parts and labor warranty. If you call uh, for any type of parts for repair, you're going to be getting an OEM part from the factory. Once your unit is out of warranty, our number one part supplier, Parts Town, carries OEM Trawson parts. You want to make sure that you're not getting any counterfeit parts on your unit. Make sure that you're getting the original parts that were used by simply going to trawson.com slash service dash parts or contacting partstown.com slash trawson slash parts. I want to thank you all for uh, giving me the opportunity and giving me the time to speak with you guys about some recommissioning. Um, at this time, if you have any questions, um, you can ask now or contact us anytime. Uh, visit partstown.com slash Trawson slash parts uh, for any of your parts needs or questions. Um, thank you guys for your time. Uh, we'll do a quick Q&A session. Matt, I'll pass it over to you. All right, yeah, thanks, Andre, for sharing your expertise with all of us. Uh, for everyone joining today, more information on Charleston will be heading your way in our post-event email, which includes the webinar replay, as well as more recommissioning and troubleshooting tips. Uh, as Andre said, we're going to take some questions now, and we actually have some uh, in queue from our attendees. So I'll start with this one, Andre. Uh, what are some tips for pre preventing G31310 freezers from always icing up? Uh, the number one tip that I can say is uh, inspecting that gasket. Uh, uh, G, uh, that model has three doors on it. So obviously making sure that three doors are closed at the same time is a little bit more of a task than just a simple one door unit. Um, you wanna make sure that you're getting a good feel that way when you close one of the doors that the pressure uh, doesn't pop open another door. So I'd say making sure that you got a good gasket. Normally when icing up occurs, um, it's due to a door being left open or cracked or a gasket uh, being damaged leaking in that warm ambient temperature. Just uh, for a reminder, I know that, uh, you know, 75 degree air feels good to us as humans, but to a, uh, to a freezer, 75 degree air doesn't feel so well. It's going to conflict with the temperature and make it rise and create ice, icing within the evaporator housing. Another question that we have in here, and um, I know this is very popular with uh, different refrigerants uh, being phased out and, and new ones being added. Um, what uh, type of refrigerant should I purchase for long term? And then another question that kind of uh, piggybacks onto this, I see it in here as well. Uh, when should R290 refrigerant be used? 
Um, R290 refrigerant, um, it's a great refrigerant, uh, it's universal. Our R290 can be used on freezers and refrigerators, which is the, the great thing about it, uh, one refrigerant going for both. Um, our, it's more of a preference, uh, just depending on what type of kitchen you have. Um, as far as refrigerant types uh, to purchase for the long term, I would say R290 would be good to have, have uh, uh, in stock. Uh, as well as R440, excuse me, I apologize, R448 and R450. Um, these are the two refrigerants that are being replaced by our uh, original refrigerants that are being phased out. Uh, 134 substitute is going to be R450, and uh, 404 is going to be replaced by 448. So I would suggest getting those two refrigerants as well as R290 to keep in stock for long term. And actually, just just a follow up, maybe to add some more context, um, is there any retrofitting that has to be done with that, or is it a pretty plug and play for any authorized tech to do that? Um, the only thing that needs to be retrofitted when it comes to the um, the 450 and the 448, uh, which is going to be your medium and low temp refrigerants, would be the metering device. Uh, that's going to be your TXV or your capillary tube. Uh, they use the same compressor um, as a 404 would use the same compressor as a 448, and uh, 134 would use the same compressor as a 450. Uh, when it comes to R290, R290 is its own different animal. Um, you're going to need to replace the entire refrigeration system if you're going to switch from a regular gas uh, to the propane refrigerator. So you went over some troubleshooting tips earlier. Um, and just generally speaking, are there – Ways where you can spot some like larger issues, um, you know, within the unit. Like, are, is there anything that, um, you know, any warning signs that um, commonly pop up that you think are important to note that maybe you didn't cover in the presentation today? Oh yes. Um, one thing uh, is just just be a uh, very very visual uh, with the unit. Make sure you don't see anything that looks odd. Um, also, uh, your, your ear is one of your best friends when it comes to refrigeration. Uh, commercial equipment is a lot louder than the equipment that you would have at home in your residence. Um, but you, you'll notice if you have any, any odd noises, um, such as we mentioned in one of the slides earlier, the compressor humming. Uh, that's something that isn't normal. That's something that won't be happening if your unit is operating correctly. So if you hear something like that, you want to make sure that you call service. Um, if you're hearing a weird noise from the inside of the unit, nine times out of ten, that's going to be your evaporator fan. Uh, whether that fan is seized up, or there's ice, or maybe it's uh, hitting something or something like that, you'll you'll recognize uh, a very odd noise. Um, as far as um, the, the the hardware, you know, your casters and things of that nature, um, your hinges, hinge covers. Uh, remember, um, when you're opening this commercial equipment, we're opening it several times, you know, an hour. Uh, those hinges need to be tightened. I'd say, uh, you know, maybe a, every month, you know, just go in and tighten your hinges because you, you're putting thousands of door openings and, and stress on those hinges. So make sure that you're tightening your hinges so that your doors are staying intact and being level. All right, we have a really good question in here from uh, one of our attendees. Are there any specific tools we should use for cleaning coils? Um, I just said that you want to make sure that you got your soft towel. I mean, um, if, you, if you do have uh, some type of air hose, that would be good because we know we're getting in depth. Uh, but make sure that you got your soft cloth. Uh, nothing really special. I mean, they, they, they sell, you know, different types of brushes and things of that nature. Uh, but, in, but in my experience, a soft cloth works uh, the best. I mean, that's, that's one thing that you're always going to have inside of a kitchen. Um, so that would be my, my recommendation. Um, looks like I got, I got another one here, um, because you had mentioned about gaskets. Uh, is there a regular maybe cycle for checking or wiping down the gaskets on your refrigeration unit? Yeah. Um, in, in my opinion, you can't, you can't inspect the gasket too much. Um, make sure that you're going for the, the areas that aren't as visual. 
Obviously, a commercial uh, piece of equipment is going to be probably within six to seven feet tall. So seeing the top of the gasket, um, seeing the bottom of the gasket, those are things that you won't be able to uh, see visually easily. Make sure that you're inspecting those. Um, our Easy Clean style gaskets do have kind of an accordion shape where you can kind of spread the gasket out to make sure that you're getting all the dirt and uh, debris and grime out. Um, but don't just go with what you can see. Get on a ladder, you know, get, get, get down on the floor, inspect that gasket and make sure that you're getting a seal all the way around. Uh, one tip that we do do in the refrigeration world to make sure that we got a good seal, uh, we do a thing called the dollar bill test, where we'll simply pull out a dollar bill and put that dollar bill around the entire uh, edge of the cabinet, making sure that it doesn't go inside the gasket. If you got a good seal on the gasket, something as thin as a dollar bill still won't be able to get in. So I'd, I'd recommend that as well. All right, some really good tips there. Um, it looks like that's all the questions we have for for today. So uh, thank you again for attending today's webinar. Make sure to complete the short survey heading your way to let us know what you think. Your feedback will help to inform us of the topics, format, and timing that best meets your needs for future events. Uh, this webinar is one of several we are hosting as part of our summer webinar festival series. We hope you join us next on July 21st for a webinar featuring our partners at Everpure and throughout the rest of the summer for great preventive maintenance and equipment troubleshooting content straight from several of our manufacturer partners and industry experts. Thank you also to our partners at Charleston for your time and valuable information provided today. Andre, very great perspective and, and tips. Everyone have a great rest of your afternoon.